All right. Now we'll go to the um, equilibrium between nitrogen dioxide and dinitrogen tetroxide. Pause. So here we have a couple of tubes of nitrogen dioxide, which if you've ever been to a big city on a smoggy day, it should look familiar. It's the brown photochemical smog chemical. And it exists in equilibrium with dinitrogen tetroxide. So the first thing we're going to try to figure out is where does the equilibrium lie? <coughs> nitrogen dioxide is brown and dinitrogen tetroxide is colorless. So we can see at room temperature the equilibrium lies in this direction, which is why that arrow is a little bit longer. Now we want to figure out is it an endothermic or exothermic equilibrium. So we'll take these two identical tubes and we'll place one in a hot water bath and one in a cold water bath and instantly you see an immediate difference. And if you zoom in close you can see the gas here volatilizing. So think to yourself, self, where does heat belong in this equilibrium? On the reactant side or on the product side? So if you said on the product side, you are correct, sir, or madam. Okay, so hot water bath, observation, turns brown. Cold water bath, turns clear. And then another thing happens that's kind of cool. If we zoom in on this, we can see what looks like moisture on the outside, if I dry it off, is actually moisture on the inside. Guess what that moisture is? It's liquid nitrogen dioxide. Okay. Now, what will happen if I shift these? It just as expected. The clear one turns brown, and the brown one turns clear. So, what was the physical action? Here we added heat. Here we removed heat. Here the shift was this way, and here the shift was that way. So if you think of heat as a product, then your explanation should come right to you. Pause. So the last equilibrium we are going to stress out is the equilibrium between two common polyatomic ions, the chromate ion and the dichromate ion. First of all, the chromate ion is a vivid yellow, and the dichromate ion is a very bright orange. Um, and then they, they're at equilibrium with hydrogen ion on this side and water on this side. Okay. So here are two solutions, one with the chromate ion and one with the dichromate ion. If we add H2SO4 to the orange, or to the yellow side rather, we'll see what happens. Pause. So again, we'll go drop by drop and see what happens. And then right away, you see that it turns orange. Then we're going to add uh, sodium hydroxide to the orange one, the dichromate solution, and we'll go drop by drop, and right away we can see it turns yellow. Now you might be thinking, can we go back the other way? So I'll add sodium hydroxide to this one.
and it turns yellow. And sulfuric acid to the other one. And it turns back to orange. So you can shift equilibria multiple, multiple times back and forth. So what happened here when we add HCl? First of all, we saw that it turns orange. Chemical action was to, and we didn't add HCl, excuse me, we had H2SO4. Um, it was to increase the concentration of hydrogen. The shift was towards the orange side. And over here, sodium hydroxide is a base, as we'll find out in the next unit. When you add a base to an acid, they neutralize each other. So the net effect, uh, we saw it turn yellow. And the net effect was to decrease the hydrogen ion. And the shift was this way. So you can explain those. And that's it for the Le Chatelier's Equilibrium Shifting Demonstration Video Lab. Have fun.